we're on. Hello, and thank you once again, YouTube, for tuning into the movie. Mobility Bros. <laughs> I'm Coach Cliff. I'm here with my brother Ron Hilton, sports massage therapist. So many things, so many things happening in his life. Congratulations to so many things. And uh, we're here to talk about human mobility, athletic mindset, pain reduction, uh, pain management, the thoughts and processes of practitioners, and the mindset of our clients and our members. Today, we're talking about two topics, one that goes into the other. We're talking about Ostrislager's disease. We're going to touch that because we talked a little bit about it previously in our last episode. And we're going to talk about when is a great time to train your kids? When should, what age should they be to start getting in the gym and really lifting and training for that sport that they might have been playing recreationally for the last five years since they were four years old and they're talking about wanting to get bigger, stronger, and faster? When is a good time to do it? When is too early to do it? And what are some of the possibilities and injuries that can occur if we do train our kids too early? But before we get to that, Let's talk about Ron, man. How are you, man? How you doing today? I'm doing fantastic, Cliff, man. Uh, I know before we start the show, I, I told you I got some great news. And um, I got picked up by um, a WBA, WNBA team for sports massage here in Connecticut, the uh, Connecticut Sun. So um, great stuff, man. And then um, I guess the Big East Conference is happening this weekend. Um, and... Um, they were looking for a massage therapist, and they, I got referred. So one of the colleges, uh, I'm going to be working one of the colleges uh, in the Big East tournament um, uh, this Saturday. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be like at nine o'clock at night too, because it's going to be after the game. But it, it's all good. So that's that's all good, man. Congratulations! You're doing so many amazing things. You know, working with collegiate athletes now, professional athletes. Um, Olympic athletes. Can we even do this anymore? That that even a thing? <laughs> I think we're in the age range where we still can say butter and fly, so it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all good, man. That is totally fly. That is extremely butter. That is awesome. Congratulations, congratulations. Uh, and now before we get into the topic too much, we want to thank our sponsors. Always grateful for our sponsors coming in. Um, our sponsor, Athletic B Legendary Athletic Apparel. Uh, you're looking right at the CEO right there, Ron Hilton, who's doing amazing things. And this is our Irish iron, iron, Irish, iron, Irish, be legendary. <laughs> there you go. So if you celebrate St. Patty's Day and you want to have some uh, dope fitness apparel to work out in, go check the description below for be legendary apparel. And also we'd like to thank Fitness Essentials. Uh, fitness Essentials is a platform where you can get program design, nutrition, one-on-one -on -one coaching, live coaching, whether it's remote or in person, depending on location. So thank you so much for Be Legendary Apparel, and thank you so much for Fitness Essentials. So let's get into it. So yeah, so, you know, last last uh, or, or, or last week's topic, we talked a little bit about, um, you know, growth spurts. Uh, but one of the things that we didn't talk about, and we just hit on a little bit, and we're just going to hit on a little bit today is Oscar disease. So what I, and, 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 uh, what what I, and what made hit home with me is that my oldest daughter, when she was doing cheerleading, actually dealt with this, and it's kind of one of those things, just kind of like, you just kind of, I guess you guys kind of gotta grow out of. But what Oscar Slider's disease is an overused condition or injury of the knee that causes a painful bump or swelling on the shin bone below the knee. Oscar Slider's disease typically affects kids during their um, pre-adolescent growth spurts. In the tweens, ages 10 to 13 for girls and early as uh, 10 to 12, uh, excuse me, as 12 to 14 for boys. Uh, the condition is caused by the consistent pulling of the patella tendon on the area below the knee where the tendon attaches and it in common tweens and teens athletes who play games or sports that involve running, jumping, uh, going up and down stairs, and also common among athletes involved in football, soccer, basketball, gymnastics, and um, or or ballet. All right, so my daughter, uh, she dealt with this. My oldest daughter dealt with this. Um, she was a hardcore uh, gym gymnast. Uh, not gymnast. Excuse me. Um, um, what do you call it? Cheerleader. 
you know, so she cheerleaded five days a week. She cheerleaded from freshman. Um, and I think even a little bit after, um, after high school, but she always, she dealt with this through her, her tween years and in, in high school. I don't think it actually kind of, I don't think it actually went away until she was probably maybe a sophomore in high school when she started, when it started actually going away. So yeah, it's just something that kids grow. It's one of those weird things. And um, I know one of the things they talked about in this in an article, this article I got was from Boston Children's Hospital. And um, they talked about, you know, just typically, um, you know, knee wraps, uh, right, the, your typical rice, uh, rest, ice, compress, um, elevate, uh, meal spore. And so just, just typical things that you would probably do to just decrease the pain. Um, I don't really, as far as what I can remember, uh, working with my daughter, uh, there was no real medic, no real like medicated thing you could actually do, which is kind of like, just got to kind of like deal with it because it's part of the growing pain process. So, so that's all I got for Oscar Slash. Just he's wanted to kind of like re kind of like give some information about that. And um, I know we slightly talked about it on our last uh, episode for growing pains. Yeah. Beautiful. If anyone has any information or, Excuse me. Sorry about that, guys. I did not mean to cough in your face. If anyone has any information or uh, any, um, yeah, wake up, any information, maybe you've dealt with this before. Maybe you've gone through something like this as your for yourself or your child. What did you do to help with the pain reduction, pain management? Put down in the comments below. Let us see what's going on so we can relate and understand and make comments with you guys about what you guys did to help overcome this pain sounds like the patella tendon gets cut or something like that or it's the growth between the patella tendon and the yeah, tibia it's and fibula. yeah it's like it's, it's just pulling on that patella tendon um so it's just it's yeah so it's um yeah it's just pulling on the patella tendon yeah, as you grow yeah so that hurts that hurts a lot yeah, right? it hurts <laughs> it just hurts you know, it you know hurts. i mean it's like a lateral pull so it just it, it just hurts <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, unfortunately, people have to go through that if they're playing any type of sport. I mean, you heard how many different sports or activities there are that could affect people with this. So if you've been affected by it, let us know right down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. We are here every Monday for you. Absolutely. So let's talk about this teen fitness. When did you go into the gym, Ron? When did you start working out? You know, it's so it's interesting as far as lifting weights. Um, man, I didn't know nothing about weight training until I was, you know, sixteen. My my dad, he went to a a, a yard sale, and bought me the uh, this little weight bench with the old school vinyl weights, and oh, and God. you had the and you had the little knobs and the and the and the little bolt where you had to take pliers and crank them down. Ah, oh, I know that. Right? Yeah, it has, yeah, it had like that looked like a Allen key kind of thing. The Allen key. So it came with a bar, a, a really thin flat bench, and then two like, I don't know if you want to call them handles, but they had a thing and then it had like a sliding piece in between so the so the so the vinyl weights don't collapse in between so you could you could actually do your 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 curls and your presses. Wow. So that was my introduction to weight training, and I never actually got taught how to do any type of weights. I just did buys and chest all day, right? <laughs> and, but growing up as a kid, um, what I did learn to do and through sports is a lot of body weight stuff. So we did your typical push-ups, your sit-ups, your calisthenics. Um, so... Um, and I and I got just a little bit of an article from uh, the Mayo Clinic. They they uh, they call it health healthy lifestyle for tweens, right? So teens, um, and they recommend strength training can be a part of a fitness plan as early as seven eight years old, um, especially with children who start sports activities such as basketball, baseball, soccer, and such. Um, so. I think weight training can be um, introduced at a young age, but you know it has to be super light, super safe. Uh, but with kids at the end of the day, and I think you can agree with this, Cliff, when when if they're under the age of ten, or I would say under the age of thirteen, 
just just run them. Just have fun. Just make them just do do activities that will make you know make uh you know make them make it fun for them. Um, you know, the Department of Health and Human Services says school children should have at least sixty minutes or more of just activities, just general activities. So. Yeah, I mean, when I was a kid, I'm going to answer my own question. When I was a kid, I started working out um, really with my dad's very young age. Um, he was a third degree black belt. He is a third degree black belt. And he really valued that. He really, yeah, he <laughs> really valued karate. He really valued martial arts. Uh, he loved watching blood sport and seeing Jean-Claude Van Damme go through all those tortures. Yeah. So he put us through it. And um, I remember doing crab walks and turtle squats and um, putting both feet on a chair as the chairs continued to get further and further apart for my splits. Uh, and I was pretty I was pretty good. Was I into it? Not every day. Some days felt like I don't know what yeah, I did yeah, wrong, man. Here, what sure, I did wrong for this. You know, it was not fun all the time, but um, it was that and going outside and playing football and in the Bronx, you know, there was no turf. It was just all cement. So you got to die for those balls if you want to catch them, whether it's cement or not. You know what I mean? <laughs> Your dad is steady QB. You better Concrete be jungle. So, uh, so that was the introduction to what it felt like to train hard and to, to do something to improve in the sport. Uh, but I didn't live with my father very long. Um, I lived with my mother most of my life. And so when we moved to North Plainfield, I want to say I was about 12 years old in North Plainfield. And, you know, anybody who remembers me from North Plainfield knows that I was in the weight room every single time I could. Um, it was for football. It was for track, mainly for football. And I would work out with, you know, I was a sophomore working out with the seniors. You know what I mean? And we were trying to put up weight. I was deadlifting with the juniors you know what I mean and I was became captain of the team I think because of my effort and my responsibility to the game as well as how serious I took the weight room uh being a teen father it really was important for me to have outlets you know to manage the stress and the overwhelming feeling of the responsibility and I did not feel like I should not be responsible. I should be aware and attentive to the child that I brought into the world. Um, but during the times where I could hit the gym right before practice or in summers, you know, between working and all the things that I was doing to support my kid, that's when I that's when I hit the weight room. And it was a beautiful thing for me. Um, awesome. It really helped me stay stable. It helped me with my mood. It helped me with my energy. It made me feel really self-confident in the things that I was doing, which made me a, a good father and a content father. Um, not the best. I was still young and stupid, but I was able to get a lot of stuff out that way. And so <clears throat> what I noticed and what I recommend is that 100% what you said, Ron, make sure if a kid is under 12 years old and you want them to get an exercise, that you make it as fun as possible for them to play. Take them to the, the discovery zones like we used to have back in the day. That was a ball pit type thing. There's plenty of people doing independent things like that nowadays that resemble the discovery zones of the 1990s or the Chuck E. Cheese's, you know, make them have fun. Um, it doesn't have to always cost you money to go outside, get a basketball from five below and take your kid out to shoot some hoops. The biggest thing with children's fitness is the parents need to be attentive to it. You want to sit, stick them in soccer. That's fine. So that you can go get Starbucks for an hour and a half and then go pick them up. Cool. Not, I'm not knocking that. We all need time and breaks, you know, and self stuff. But if you're taking care of your kid and you want them to be healthy and it's not about body shaming, it's not about, you know, knocking them for the calories that you're putting in front of them to eat because they're not cooking food on their own. It's about movement. It's about making sure that their heart health is good. It's about making sure that their mobility is good. It's about allowing them to smile and laugh and enjoy physical fitness because let's be real, we're going to be doing exercise and fitness for our, the rest of our lives. Absolutely. You know, I don't care how many shots that they make to stick in your stomach. You're still going to have to move your body and get strong unless you want to have broken bones and brittle bones and all the other things. So for kids, make it fun. And then when they're 13 years old, maybe introduce them to a fitness program. Um, if you don't have any idea what that means, look for a professional. And please vet those professionals to make sure that they are really capable of taking care of children and moving children through a progression that's very slow to slow paced. 
You know, you're not looking for a baby Hercules, a guy that's going to be both <laughs> seven, seven years old. Yeah, even, yeah, yeah, even yeah. baby Hercules, if you look him up, there's a real baby Hercules. It's, it's a real thing. Um, and he'll tell you, at 19, 20 years old, he hated working out. He just became heavy and he lost all of his ability to train. He, he must have got it back by now. Hopefully he's gotten over, you know, the demand that was put on him to look that way and to train that way. But like a all, all I'm trying to say is make sure it's fun. You know what I mean? Make yeah, sure you know, it's and, and like you know, like I said, I just want to just in, and I, I can listen. I can relate to being in a dojo training. I, you know, my my uh, my martial art instructor Greg Curtis. Uh, I I, I was telling him, man, you train just like grown ups because you watch grown up class, and grown up class was just as hard. Like it, you train us no different, right? You know, we're talking about the late '80s, early '90s, man. It's just you know, you just you know, I had abs at like 10 years old. I was like, oh my god, right? <laughs> so it's just a different thing, and, you know. And one thing I do think is different too is the timing in this it, it, wh where we are is different. I believe that you know when I was growing up, I climbed trees, I rode my bike, I dude, I came in the house tired and sweaty. Like I was like I was at dinner, I took me a bath, I was like yo, I'm done. Like I don't believe that kids are like that anymore, right? So. I, you know, I, I think that this it, we're in a, we're in a time where kids are more in home, and I think COVID actually really just took that out. And 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 uh, you got a lot of kids playing more video games and doing more and things inside. Um, you know, get your kids out there, right? Get your kids out there playing and having fun. Um, and it doesn't have to be with a sport; it could just be them just going out and doing stuff. You know, just just unleash the beast. Just let them go out and do things. Um, with the the cool the great thing about kids, especially when they're young, they have a great imagination, so they can go and make things up, make games up, and do things. Uh, you just gotta let that happen, right? So, you know, and then as far as weight training, you know, when you start introducing that weight training at a young age, just start out with something light, something that's not gonna be like arduous to them. It could be maybe just doing some light resistance bands, you know, starting out with that first, um, you know. And then as you get older, you progress. But I remember, you know, getting into high school and going into the gym and we would have like bench press contests in the, in, you know, and, you know, in junior senior year, like how much can you bench? And yeah. uh, there was this one kid, Adam Rogers, dude would bench the whole freaking rack, bro. I don't know how much, but he was the only kid who could put on all the plates and he would just, he would just power it up, you know, strongest kid in the freaking school. And, um, so, but you know, I I just think over time it 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 it's just progressive. And like in and, and like Cliff said, uh, if you're not sure as a parent, you know, vet professionals and really talk to professionals and see what they're doing. Um, and just just don't always take their word for it. Um, you know, ask around and just see if they could do because the last thing you want to do is your kid get get hurt and and they didn't know. Um, you know, and I know in our last episode, I talked about how I did a, uh, I did, I did a strength program for kids starting out and I, you know, I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything. I didn't know what I didn't know, but I ended up just doing just program where I just designed where they just did machines. And eventually I did bring them down into the weight room and did some light stuff with them, but still they were all young kids, you know? So, um, so yeah, it's it, at the end of the day, it's just good to get kids out there and get them active, um, and just get them having fun first, and then um, as they start getting older and age, start slowly introducing them to weights. That yeah. that's that's my professional feedback on that. Yeah, I've been working with kids for about a year now, um, between ages thirteen and eighteen years old, and these kids don't want to be in the gym. Uh, they're they're seeing me because they have disciplinary issues. They're seeing me because they're using substances in school and they're not supposed to. And I'm here to teach them functional integrative therapy. Again, I talked about this a little bit in the last episode. So these kids are resistant to training and they think they can just blow through it and they can ignore it. And I have to always reel them back into, yo, you're not even squatting properly. You're not going under the, the bar to squat with the bar. You can't even squat normally. Oh, you want a deadlift? Well, that kid has good form. You don't have good form. I'm sorry. Right. You're going to learn how to do it properly 
because you're not going to lift 315. Sorry, buddy. You're going to have back pain and complain about that. And then you're not going to be in here because you're going to use that as an excuse. And what a great excuse it is because you didn't want to be here in the first place. Right, right, right. And then I have kids that I train because they're really trying to be great at their sport. And I love training all types of kids. But it's just a different mindset when they're coming in and they want to be great at their sport and they understand the importance of form and posture. They take it slow. They build up. We move to speed. They're giving me constant feedback, and it's great. Um, that's what you want when you have a coach coming in to work with your kids. You want to make sure that they're going to make sure that it's step by step, incrementally growing, and they understand the personality. They understand the mo the motive behind it. The parents are involved. You don't have to sit outside. You can come in, sit down, or move with your kid and to see what they're experiencing and the challenges Absolutely. that they're going through. Absolutely. I would highly recommend it. Now, for those single parents, those single children, parents with single children <clears throat> or single parents that are raising multiple children, I get it. It's tough. Because one, if you have a single child or a child that's like very distant between siblings, they want to play a lot. And it's tough because you're working your butt off and you got to find time during the week to get them active and moving. And playing in an apartment is not always ideal, right? Because the person downstairs is hitting the wall. Yeah, I get it. I live it. You know, I get it. Um, but even then, going outside for a walk in the woods taking your kid to help you go get the mail and just letting them run around a little bit. Um, anytime, because they're willing to do it, anytime they're willing to do it and you get them outside, that's one extra step knowing that you're going to help them in the long run, right? Because if you teach them to be sedentary as a child, they will become more sedentary as an adult and it'll be harder for them to move, right? Because they're going to be comfortable in that lifestyle. So you got to get them moving. You got to get them moving. And as a single parent, Maybe, you know, you find playmates, kids in the classrooms that you can help with. And I, I'm very skeptical skeptical of sleepovers. You know, I'm a millennial parent. I'm not, my kid's seven years old. He hasn't done a sleepover in some random person's house. I'm sorry. I'm just not comfortable with it anymore. Back, oh, in, the day, back in the day, I was. Bye. Nowadays, like, I'm just not comfortable with it. There's too many horror stories, right? Yeah. Like, I used to be able to run out the house by myself and just have to come home before the lights go on. And that's in New York City in the hood. And my seven-year-old's not running out by the house by himself. You know what I'm saying? It's not happening. Um, but I also had siblings. So it's 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 very, there's a lot of layers and we respect that there's a lot of layers, but ultimately those layers are excuses. You got to get your kid moving and you should be a part of that. You know, you should be kicking the soccer ball with them. You should be moving with them. What do you think about that, Ron? I agree. You know, when I was growing up, you know, my dad would be like, hey, let's go outside and pass the ball. I'm like, I don't want to. Come on, let's go. You know, so we'd take the football and, uh, you know, we'll go to a field or somewhere and we just throw the ball, right? Um, you know, I went, you know, when I played baseball, you know, as a kid, I knew it was one sport I really actually didn't like. Um, but I was like, you know what? You know, I, I grew up just... You know, my parents always say, try something. If you don't like it, then don't do it. But I remember, you know, I got my mitt and everything, and we would just throw the ball, right? So that interaction with uh, just doing simple things like, you know, just basic things with your kid. You know, I did that with my son growing up, you know, and then, you know, my daughters, I, I, they, they, they were dancers and – and gymnasts, I, I, I mean, I could do a mean toe touch in the air. So I, I, I you know, I, I could do it. But other than that, I really couldn't do much as far as like what they were doing. So, but you know, my, my, my contribution to them was making sure that they got there and staying there and watching what they were doing, and 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 just taking in what they were doing. Um, but you know. It, it, really quick side story. So I remember my oldest daughter, I was like, I kind of wanted her to get into something I was doing. So uh, I was like, you know, I could teach you how to box. You know, I could teach you how to use your hands, right? So I got heavy back, I got gloves. And man, that was the most arduous thing down there. I would I would put the gloves on. She was like. <laughs> Not feeling it at all. Be pouting. You know, 13 years old, pouting. Mm -hmm. I wasn't doing this. 
And I was like, well, if I can, if I can get her to to start moving and do that's something I can like help her with, you know, and, and just it just move along. But other than that, it was just but to your point. Inter no matter what their sport they're doing, even if it's a sport you can't relate to, just be present and interact any way you can. You know, even if it's like, okay, like my my daughter, my youngest daughter was heavily into dance all the way up until COVID hit. You know, it was always interacting with her teacher to say, okay, what's next? What do we got to do? Okay, what what else? What are the things we have to do to get her prepped and ready? So it was always those things. Yeah, I think that's solid, man. I think that's a beautiful point. And, um, you know, just when you're ready to get your kids in the weight room and they ask for a couple of things, I think resistance bands make sense. Try to avoid injury by making sure they're not lifting too hard. They understand their movement patterns. Don't go my list. Right? They're not locking their <laughs> knees out. They're not locking their elbows out when they're doing things. Um, They're not overextending their neck. You know, body awareness is very important. Make sure that they have body awareness. And if they don't know what that is, they shouldn't be lifting yet. Let them do body weight work. If they can't do a push-up, why are they trying to bench 145 pounds? Like, doesn't make sense. You know, make sure it makes sense. What do you think about that? I, I agree with that. And also make sure you you uh, do, dy a, do a dynamic warm work. And, and if you don't understand what that is, is um, it's warm up with movement, right? So I think before you do any, start getting into that, you want to start doing that as well. And it, you know, and, and, and I think if you're a little older, if, if you can, if you can, you know, do like a super, super, super lightweight and just get some warm up, maybe like, I mean, even like five, five, 10 pounds, maybe just kind of do some warm ups with that. Just some super lightweight, just to get the blood pump in, you know, but you always want to do some type of dynamic warm up before you do it. You don't want to ever start lifting cold because you can actually hurt yourself. Um, so you want to get the blood, you get the, the muscle fibers elastic and the blood going and blood flowing. Um, so I think that's important as well. Yeah, I agree. I think dynamic warmups are important and understanding like the dynamic warmup is a total body thing, right? So you can go into some Pilates movements, you can go into some yoga movements, you can go into some lunge and twists movements and some um bear crawls things like that that may be fun for kids as well because they're you know crawling around and stuff like that mm -hmm. and then if you're going to do a bench your warm-up is the bar you know and if the yeah, bar is going to be lifting anything but the bar um if you're going to do a military press your warm-up is very light dumbbells if you're going to do um squat on the bar your warm-up should be some squats before you put the bar on your back like just warm up by doing the movement very very light I call and that then, beauty versions of the of the movement. Yeah, exactly. That's what I would do for especially for young kids to make sure that their form is good. And I mean the body's gonna respond to that because it neurologically knows the mind-body connection will be there. And you've done the movement, you know what the movement requires, and then you can go and do it a little heavier. What awesome. do you do? I agree with that. You know, I I just I, I I agree with that as far as you know, just make sure that. You know, like, like I just said, the Judea version of that movement. And then, so when I say the Judea version, means that you're just doing, you're just going through the movement pattern of what you're actually going to do. And it could be with that, it could be with, you know, with that light, that light weight on your back, <laughs> you know, could be with light weight, could be, you know, see, I'm doing the Judea version of military press, right? With my, with my pins, right? So exactly. you're just taking yourself through that movement and, you know, you, you, and when you move forward and you start seeing high level athletes, that's what they do when they warm up. They do, they do a lot of the a junior version of what they're going to do for the warm up, right? So, uh, and then when they actually get into the do that 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 run, that jump, that lift, then you know they'll, they'll actually have that the load, or they'll actually come off with that explosion off the uh, off the track. So. Um, so that's that's just really important that you that you you know you know you all understand that you know and just put it in the comments if you have any questions about more about that as well. Yeah, guys, this has been an amazing episode. We really appreciate everything you guys have done to support us this far. We appreciate all of our subscribers, all of the people who have put in hours and hours of watch time for us. 
we're going on you know a couple of years strong now right we're, we're going yeah, on yeah. we're strong. we're pushing almost our 50th episode man we're getting close so that's <laughs> that's fire so thank you once again to our sponsors for allowing us to be here and to do this thing and know it's us but if it wasn't for us putting in the time we wouldn't be here i hope you're taking this free knowledge and implementing it using it sharing it communicating it um, if there's anything that you think we're missing, put it in the comments below. Please remember to like, subscribe, like, subscribe, and hit the notification. We drop videos every Monday, whether they're shaky or not. <laughs> every Monday we drop videos, and uh, we have many, many topics that we're talking about. We have amazing interviews that we're grateful to have from people that come on, from experts, um, from all walks of the industry. Um, so check out those episodes as well. And um, Ron is doing amazing things, man. We're watching him grow. Fitness Essentials is doing amazing things. We're watching that grow. And we look forward to growing with you. Awesome. Awesome. So I'm just going to close it out. And thank you all for being a part of Mobility Bros. And I want you to stay awesome. Keep stepping to greatness. Be legendary. Come check us out. And uh, wait, and we'll uh, see you next week. Take Have care, everyone.